Forgive me if I look a little bummed tonight. It's not my usual mood in this time period. My usual mood in this time period is of, of overwhelming joy because we're doing really wonderful. But why don't I uh, get the bad news first so I can end off on a good note. Let's just say the feeling that I that I feel right now can only be described or compared to one other feeling I felt in my life. Being dumped and cheated on. We visited Carlos and Isabel today for the first time in several weeks. And we didn't get any new news, but it just really hurt this time. I knew that Carlos is working Sundays again. Maybe it's the fact that we went in there today and we asked, well, are you planning on, or how long are you planning on doing this for? And he says, well, as long as I can. He'll work as many Sundays as he possibly can. It's not about anybody making him, it's not a matter of him losing his car, or his job. It's not a matter of him putting food on the table. It's a matter of him paying for his brand new Pontiac. That's all it is. Let me make sure the date's on here. Okay. I don't know why I didn't feel like condemning them today. I think it was later with a little smackdown on them, but I just didn't feel like it. Can't explain it. Maybe I didn't have the guts. Man. What, what happened? He committed. He... Is it our fault on the teaching? We committed him to, to keep his Sabbath day holy. He knew that he's not even supposed to buy on Sunday. A little less work 10 hour shifts. He knows better than that. I'm finding a lot of hopeless feelings right now. Because what, how are we supposed to feel joy when we have no idea if our baptisms will even be active by the end of the year? How are we supposed to be happy? How are we supposed to be satisfied with what we do knowing that? Knowing that no matter what we do, most of the people we teach will go inactive. I know it's not true, but I'm being really tempted to just call it pointless. I'm not, but I'm getting tempted to, tempted to do so. I don't know what to think anymore. Next time we go over there, though, no mercy. We'll tell them how it is. Call him out on it. I'll call him out on the Sabbath breaking. Simple as that. He needs to know what he's doing. <sighs> you know the silliest thing, and but it's it's equally as sad as Carlos and Isabel. Isabel Fernandez is putting her her Sunday attendance on the line for a job that pays $20 a week. A restaurant job. She's the help. She works a handful of hours a week. And if they call her up on Sunday, believe her she's the most faithful one 
But I do want you to know that it's not permanent. It's just today. <laughs> not always feeling this way. We had yesterday. We had we got wonderful news. Excellent news. Cote committed. She's going to be baptized the 26th of August. We read Mosiah 18 with her. Chaos and Peter ser baptizados. It hit her like a ton of bricks and she was just so shocked she didn't know what hit her. She knew it was good but she just she couldn't believe it. She couldn't believe it. it can just scripture could just slap her in the face like that. And so we took the opportunity and, and set a date right then and there. It's very good news. It's it's just gonna be one of the chain reaction. Next Felipe, next Patricia, next the dad. It'll happen. I know it will. Steep down inside I still have faith. One other good thing happened this week. We let me check how much time I have left. Four minutes. We found last Thursday an inactive, just knocking doors. It turns out she went off and on in Black Creek and has moved here and has been here for about eight months. Just a total coincidence, just found her. It's great. And so we went over yesterday as well, after Patricia. We're talking and we meet her two, two of her kids. One's 18, one's like 17 or 16. And we were talking with them and we were talking with Chris, the 18 year old, and said, like, ah, you know, I believe in God, but you know, there's too much confusion, blah, blah, blah. I said, well, do you, do you think there's a way to find out for sure? He said, no, flat out no. Conversation progressed a little bit. I said, what if I told you that there is a way you can find out? He said, well, then I'd want to do it. <laughs> I said, well, that's what we do. We help people to find out. Would you like to find out? Yes. Okay, let us teach you. Okay. Simple as that. We have an, uh, another potential investigator. And the mom is totally psyched about it because her kids will, because she'll have more people than just, her, just herself in the church. I hope we get to church more often. So that's really cool. We're going to go teach them on Friday. I'll tell you what, you know it's become my absolute torture. Friday and Saturday, why? No meetings. It's the only days out of the week where we have nothing scheduled regularly. It's the hardest thing in the world to fill up those days, especially the mornings. Every single other morning is full. Friday and Saturday, such a pain. And it's Wednesday and I'm already stressing over Friday. I'm already bothered about what we're going to do on that day. So this one to try. The word's not doing any better. I hate to say it. We're, we're trying so hard. To think of a way we can heal this word. To stop the selfishness. To bring love back in. The only thing we're going to start praying for and hoping for now is that when Elder Scott comes this next month we have more than a couple good words to say to these people. We're hoping, we're praying, and we're praying that these people will will catch on, will respond to whatever it is that Elder Scott's gonna, gonna say to them.